Hi everyone, this is Mani Deepak. In this video, I want to talk about the recent change in the format of Yahoo Finance data. And uh, many of your uh, users have commented in, in some of our videos about how this uh, recent change has uh, broken some of the existing code. So I would want to highlight the issue first, then I'll talk about the uh, the different solutions that you that you can use to address it. And uh, lastly, also give you uh, just about what the Yahoo Finance library is and what, what you can actually do with it. A few days ago, if you have downloaded uh, a stock data from Yahoo Finance, you would have received data in this format, right? So if you see, you will see date as an index and you'll see open, high, low, close, adjusted close and volume as its columns. But lately, what you're seeing is, along with all other columns that I just discussed, you will see this sticker symbol being repeated multiple times. Now, essentially, what it is doing is it's adding two sets of columns. So and the first set of columns can be seen here, and the second set of columns can be seen here. So let me actually demonstrate this to you with an example. So I've already uh, try to download this data and uh, as, as I mentioned, you'll see the ticker symbol being repeated. Now, if I just look for what are the columns that we have for this data frame, you will see that this is a multi-index data frame with two sets of columns, as I mentioned. And uh, one set of columns is called price, the other set of columns is called ticker, and it has its own values to it. Now, we can go back to the earlier structure by doing a couple of things. So you can choose one of these solutions that I'm going to just discuss. And I think the most simpler one uh, is what I'll discuss first. So when you download the data from Yahoo yeah, Finance, you would see that there are multiple parameters here that you can use. Typically, you would probably use you know, the stock symbol, the start date, end date. But there is another parameter called multi-level index. And you can either use true, which is the default value here, or we can change this to false. In that case, you will not receive a multi-index data frame. So let me actually show this to you. So here I will, along with these parameters, I will add a multi-level index. Let me just select that. And instead of using the default value, I will select false. And let's see what I get, right? So there you go. You can just add this additional parameter and you will not see the additional column that you were seeing, the ticker and the symbols here, right? So uh, this is one way. So this is one way of doing it. Another way that uh, that we initially followed. Uh, in fact, one of our members, um, Glenn, has actually pointed this out. Uh, this is another interesting way of solving this problem. So since uh, I just addressed this problem, let me actually download this again. And let's see. What is what does stock have? So stock again has this multi-level index. So what I would do is I will redefine the columns of the data frame, which we call stock here, and replace these columns with the first set of columns that we are seeing here, right? So if you see in the existing stock data frame, you will see these as the first set of columns. And the second set of columns is what you see in the second level. All we need is the first level, so which we refer it here as call zero. So when you actually run this and see what's there in stock, you will see that you know you just have the first level of columns, and that's exactly what you need. And once you do this, I think uh, you know your data frame looks exactly how it was earlier. So you can keep the rest of the code by either using this parameter, 
multi-level index is equal to false or you can also apply this to rearrange or remove one level of index in the data frame now how do you anticipate such issues with yahoo finance uh, let's talk about that a little bit so just a background on yahoo finance so yahoo finance is a is a python library created by ran arusi long time ago and uh, he is actively maintaining this library and as you can see the notice here this is not owned by yahoo this is an open source tool that hits the yahoo's publicly available api by the way yahoo doesn't have any official api to retrieve their data earlier they used to have one uh, but now they don't so instead many of us many of the traders would use this python library to get the financial data because it's absolutely free right so here in this documentation in the github you will see what are the different data points that you can get from yeah finance and you know as as this is maintained in in github you can see many pull requests and one of the pull requests that came uh, about recently was that you know in, uh, if they can actually update the update the code to change the default so in that case we don't need to write false again here uh, by default we will receive the data frame in this format so if you actually go here into the code for yahoo finance if you see here here in the definition you can see that multi level index is equal to true here if the pull request is accepted or approved and the code gets merged then you should see that the multi level index will change to false in that case you don't need to update your code to false again um you know your code should work as is if this pull request is approved so yeah so this is one of the cons with uh, an open source library i must say uh, so some of these things would change um and uh, you got to keep an eye on how the data has changed and how you can update your code to accommodate that change so that's a quick overview of uh, what yahoo finance is and what what's what's the latest change and how you can address that issue if you have any more questions please feel free to drop a comment thank you